Shalom Saints and greetings. Welcome to this Apostolic Reforming Movement session. This of course is a day that Yahweh has made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. I am eager, I am delighted, I am overjoyed to know that those of you who are of the truth are continuing therein. You're continuing to stand strong. You're continuing to demonstrate the strength of the righteous. You're continuing to manifest the boldness and the courage of the saints of Yahweh. And for that, I give Yahweh praise. I am so grateful to those of you who have begun to share the broadcast because there are those who do not have notifications for whatever reason. So please, if you don't mind, you can share this with them. You can also invite those who are in your close circles so that they can know that I'm live because they follow me but they don't get notifications for some reason. Okay? So shalom and blessings. Shalom to all of you. If you're an old person, <laughs> you may not know what I'm about to address this evening. So it's good. For, it's good. If you're younger, then you know just what I'm talking about. So greetings and shalom. Please let me know if the audio is fine, if the sound is good, and if the video is okay. Okay, we're doing our audio, video check. As long as they're good, then we can begin our broadcast. Excellent. Thank you so much, Suze. And shalom to all of you. What does shalom mean? Shalom speaks to being at peace in terms of your confidence in Yahweh, not, not your surroundings being quiet, but confidence in Yahweh's ability to keep His promise to you. Amen? That is Yahweh's shalom, and I bid that to you all. So you may see saints coming here if you're new to the broadcast, and they may be bidding me shalom or greeting others by saying shalom. Shalom is a Hebrew word. It means peace. We have the shalom of Yahweh, and so I greet you with that. This evening, it is always, as I said, a pleasure to share with you the word of Yahweh without fear, without any degree of caution, uh, to wonder who would stop following and who would not. So, greetings y'all. Greetings to all of you. Thank you so much. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And blessings. Seems as if we are fine. Now, as I said, please, if you don't mind, you can share the broadcast with us. Those of you who are normally following me um, and, and know the, the challenges that people face, um, I'd be grateful if you can do that. I see Mama Rosie is live as well is with us. Shalom, Mama Rose. Good to see you. Okay. Shalom, my brother. The topic, as, as Sister Denise <laughs> Burks pointed out, Kanye West saved and he's now a preacher. Anything goes in Jesus' name. As an apostle of the Lord Yeshua, there are certain things that, and as you mature in the faith, if you're young, you realize this happens. Oh, you can see it now, by the way. Certain things become trends in churches. They, they gain momentum. And before you know it, persons are swallowed up. And they are consumed, shalom, shalom, Emil. They are consumed by what can become a trend, but not necessarily something that is spiritually sound. I'll give you an example, or a few examples if I can. We have got the notion, or most of us would have had it from the, oh, the, when you were in error. Shalom, Brother Zakar. Good to see you. Sister Mish, Shalom. And the notion, the notion is, blessings, that as long as... So, and this is, if you haven't heard, maybe if you wouldn't hear anything else tonight, hear this first part, please. The notion is that as long as somebody demonstrates what we perceive to be a change of behavior... And they say that they're following God. We call them saved. Let me say that to you again. The trend is, as long as somebody says, or they show some sign that they've changed some behavior, and they say that they're following God, or Jesus, people rush to say they're saved. 
you will see tonight on this broadcast. Shalom Tessin, it's good to see you. You'll see tonight in this broadcast why this matter with Kanye West has to be addressed. One of the greatest errors that has gripped the churches for years, maybe centuries, is that persons measure salvation by human standards. For example, they have what is called an altar call. There's no scripture whatsoever to the church that speaks to anybody getting saved by an altar call. No apostle in scripture has ever made an altar call. There's nothing called a sinner's prayer according to scripture. Now tonight's broadcast is going to be, as usual, entirely based on scripture. Or identifying what is not found in scripture. This would help some of you in your walk and in your confidence. So let's begin with understanding what happens. According to scripture, the church is supposed to follow the letters written by the apostles. The church was supposed to follow the doctrines of the apostles. The church continued steadfastly in the apostles' teachings. Not in their ideologies, not in what they felt was okay, not in what they thought was all right. Acts chapter 15, when there was an issue among Shaul and, and some other brethren, they said, go to Yerushalayim and ask of the apostles and the elders, which are the leaders of the church, whatever they say we shall abide by. Because the men were saying, you need to be circumcised according to Moshe's law to be saved. And Shaul said, no, that is not so. So they went to Yerushalayim, they got word from the elders. Kepha said, do not burden these people because our own fathers who were Hebrew could not keep the law. Why would you ask a Gentile to keep the law? He said, don't burden them. They must stay away from sexual immorality, stay away from things offered to idols, stay away from blood. And they have to abide by certain basic teachings. Who established that? The apostles and the elders who were the senior apostles, Yaakov, Kepha, Yochanan. Saints, if ever we, the church deviates from the apostles' doctrines, they will have to substitute that with doctrines of men. If ever the church deviates from the apostles, what is written by the apostles, they will have to substitute that with doctrines of men. I say to you again, you, I dare any preacher out there, any one of you, who wants to challenge me. Prove just once, just one scripture, whereby any apostle of the Lord Yeshua had an altar call for salvation. None. Never happened. Secondly, there's nothing called a sinner's prayer that you repeat after some preacher. The scripture states that if you, the individual, confess with your mouth the Lord Yeshua by name. Believe in your mind, your heart. The deepest part of your being is called the heart. You live in Hebrew. You must be convicted beyond human reasoning that Yahweh raised Messiah from the dead. You shall be saved. If you confess, which is to make a proclamation, not a secret thought. If you proclaim with your mouth the Lord Yeshua. In other words, this statement means you have to be bold to say Yeshua is Lord. If you cannot make that confession, you never say it. And it had a name attached to that statement. No apostle in scripture ever heard of anyone called Jesus because the name did not exist. English language as we know it, blessings Pastor Mel, good to see you. English language as we know it today is just about four or five hundred years old, modern English that is. If not even that old. So there was never, Pastor Mel, you need to start using Regina's tablet, man. Your, your phone gave you too much trouble. There was never anything called an altar call. They had no church building, so where, did, where is the altar call they're making as to um, Apostle William Harper? Now, this is the foundation to those of you who last to the broadcast, some of you will run before I get to halfway anyway, because it's about to get serious. 
The foundation to what people call salvation is already erroneous. Number one, there's nothing called an altar call. Firstly, actually, there's nobody called Jesus that can save you because the name never existed in Scripture. Secondly, there's nothing called an altar where you get saved at. Erroneous again. Thirdly, there's nothing called a sinner's prayer that you repeat after some preacher to be saved. Wrong again. So if, you're, if, the, if the entry into what you call Christendom or Christianity is erroneous, how could you be saved? When Messiah said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You enter into salvation by error. And these people want to say they're saved. So there are persons who are Jeremiah Daniels. He sees a prophet. Full of the flesh. Who said that Kanye West being at the New Birth Cathedral, which is where Eddie Long was the preacher. I want you to understand trends here. Eddie Long was the muscular short man who would always show his body and stuff like that. And then, of course, you know, on CNN, Global News, he was brought down by some boys who he had to pay, I think it was about $25 million altogether, so that they would not talk about what happened between he and them. Eddie Long died. He was eaten by cancer. After he died, Shalom Sister Nat, they tried to find a preacher. They found a preacher called Jamal Bryant, who was the leader of Empowerment Temple. Jamal Bryant is from the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Jamal Bryant sat with Louis Farrakhan and said Farrakhan is a man of God. And Farrakhan is a good man. Farrakhan is a Muslim now. Shalom, um, Sister Al, Mama James. Farrakhan does not believe on the Lord Yeshua. Good night, Francie. Jamal Bryan, because of Farrakhan's popularity, went to take side with Farrakhan because he is always an opportunist. Jamal Bryant is known, this is no secret, for dating an R&B singer whom he said is his greatest inspiration ever. Now hear me. Not Yeshua the Messiah, not the word of Yahweh, not a preacher. An R&B secular singer, Jamal Bryant, said his girlfriend is his greatest inspiration, though she's not saved. That's the leader of now the New Birth Cathedral, where, Bap, Missionary Baptist Church, where Eddie Long was once the leader. Jamal Bryant is motivational. Jamal Bryant knows how to spin the crowd. Jamal Bryant, I have met him in person. I sat and ate with him in the same room with other people. And this is the man who has caused Kanye West to now be considered a preacher and a saved man. Good evening. So let me address this. Jeremiah Daniels and many other people have said that, Je that Kanye West's presence at the church in Atlanta is going to show how judgmental people are and who, how much they hate when persons get saved. Let me help you, because most of you don't follow this, so you would not know what I'm talking about, just to help you to understand the, the premise in which I speak. First of all, Kanye West started what is called the Sunday, this Sunday church, where he would have people sing, and he would assemble a group of singers, and they would travel. It's a secret society, more or less, where they have to wear his clothes, his clothes, clothes clothing line, they have to wear his shoes. They have to wear his outfits if they want to sing with him. Further to that, they are made to go to locations that are not advertised. So they just pop up in different places and they sing.
All right, let me find it for you. They just go to various locations and they begin to sing. You are not told where they're going. All that happens is he calls the producer. The producer would make arrangement for them to get to whatever location it is. They pop up. They begin to sing. They sing songs about Jesus, of course. In this Atlanta case with Jamal Bryant, they made arrangement that last Sunday they're going to pop up in the new Missionary Baptist Church, New Birth Church. And at New Birth, they're going to just pop up and begin to sing. And that's what you saw happen. They popped up, they walked through the congregation and began singing. Kanye West became the preacher for a moment and it made headlines. This is what I'm giving redress to tonight. Where people, including those who say they're prophets, said now that Kanye West is saved and Kanye West is being used by God. I want you to hear the terminology, save is being used by God. The question is, which God? And saved by whom? Now, all of you who follow me, none at all, I'm talking to a particular group of people, who follow my teachings, say you believe what I say is the truth, say that you know the Messiah's name is issue and all of that, but you could then turn around and support Kanye West, I'm talking to you tonight. Because you as well will come in for a rebuke and reproof. I want to show y'all what now if Kanye West is saved, Kanye West is a preacher, Kanye West is now qualified to make altar call, whatever they want to call it, because people are saved. Let me show you why Jesus people would accept this. Because I want you to understand something. This is 100% about the flesh. The name, don't get mad yet, don't get upset yet. The name Jesus is derived from the flesh. And I'll prove it to you. You can't argue with this when I get through to you tonight. Unless you're a fool. The name Jesus is entirely human. Let me prove it to you. Number one, all of the people we speak to accept acknowledge and themselves declare that Jesus is a name in English that came from a name in Hebrew or they say Greek which is not true hear me Jesus is a name from their lips that is English that came from something else In order for it to be a translation, which is not, Jesus is not a translation of anything. Because to translate means to say what something means. If you have a translator, the translator is telling you what something means from another language. So the name Jesus is not a translation of anything. Because it doesn't say what something means. You cannot have a translation that has to be translated. Jesus is not a transliteration either because to transliterate, we said before, you use the, le the letters of one alphabet as a substitute from another alphabet to maintain the pronunciation of a word. So at the end of it all, Jesus came from human intellect. If it came from human intellect, it is of the flesh. That's what flesh means. What comes from man, from man's heart. From nature within man, not Yahweh. So the name Jesus is entirely flesh. If it is entirely flesh, then salvation in Jesus' name must be based on the flesh also. So that is why you have to 
feel saved in Jesus' name. But you know that you are saved. You have to believe saved in Yeshua's name. In Jesus' name, you feel saved. With Yeshua, you believe saved. So Yeshua doesn't give you room for an opinion about your salvation. With Yeshua the Messiah, you are saved by a belief system that says, this is what you believe and nothing else. Not this is what you, your opinion says. Not in, in my language, I say Jesus, but in another language. With Yeshua the Messiah, it is a belief saved. Meaning, if I don't believe that he is Messiah, and if I don't proclaim what I believe, I am not saved. With Jesus it is, I know the Messiah's name is Yeshua, but I choose to call him Jesus. You're not saved because salvation is not by what you said to be the standard. It's by what Yahweh said is the standard. And because Jesus is a product of human wisdom, then anything goes by human wisdom. All it requires is agreement and okay, fine, let's work that. Let me show you what happens in Jesus' name in Kanye West singing. I'll flip the camera to show your Jesus people what you accept and if this is the standard in your church. Because if Kanye West is saved and if Kanye West is a preacher, then this is what Kanye West singer looks like. Just watch. Take a good look. Let it sink in. She's wearing Yeezy, Yeezus, or Yeezy outfit. This is what a Kanye West singer, this is one of the Jesus Church, the Jesus Sunday session he had. It's from NikkiSwift.com. This is a photograph of one of the singers. Look at how she is dressed. This is the Judge Not crew I'm talking to here now, because you can't judge her, can you? So a woman dressed in this manner, you can't judge her. Kanye West is our pastor. Well, he's, he's a preacher now. Anything goes in Jesus' name. This is his apparel she's wearing. You can see other people here. The, the, dr the drum is there. And the drummers are looking up at this singer. Look, man, let me leave it on the screen for some of y'all to see clearly what happened in Jesus' name. That's what we're dealing with. And that's what you foolish people will say, that the church is judgmental because Kanye West is saved. This woman here is not, let me help you all, is not a gospel singer. Because DMX and all these people, I'll get into it. All Kanye does is he picks out all who, okay, you popular, come sing with me. So last Sunday, the church where he had to go to was New Birth because that's, with, that's the pop-up location. How many of you people who said Jeremiah Daniels and all y'all that, that Kanye West is saved will have somebody come to your church, as you put it, to sing in that manner? Let me give you some more news. Kanye West, of course, you know, is married to Kim Kardashian. Listen to his statement. Kanye West said that he's always thought about making his own church, not the building. Not the bu Messiah Yeshua said, I will build, make my church and the gates of Hades, hell will not prevail against it. Kanye West said he always thought about making 
a church. Do you know what it means, saints? That's why he's he's Jesus. Yeshua the Messiah said, I will make or build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Kanye West said he wants to make a church. He's married to Kim Kardashian. Kanye West, mother-in-law, Kris Jenner, is a co-owner of a church in California. Some of you didn't know that, huh? She's married to Bruce Jenner, who sees a woman dressed like a... He, dressed, he won the Woman of the Year Award. That's why I said I have to give some of your background to these people. Kanye West's mother-in-law is the co-owner of a church. Keeping up with the Kardashians, right. The mother-in-law co-owns a church in California. And her husband is Bruce Jenner, who says he's a woman. Who did all the surgery to look like a woman, and he was voted as the woman of the year. But you people... Who follow me, some of you, could say that we are judgmental because Kanye West is saved and Kanye West is a preacher because Kanye West calls on Jesus. So let me get this straight then. Let's just get this straight tonight. For those of you who are disciples of the truth, this is where the test comes for you. Were you saved in the name of Jesus? This is where the test comes to you all here right now then. Right here, right now. Were you saved in the name of Jesus? If your answer is yes, then you cannot deny anybody else's salvation in Jesus' name. Don't let's rush this. We go into the text in a minute. We're in 1 Timothy chapter 3, by the way. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's get this to convict some of you out of what you process. If you were saved in the name of Jesus, then Kanye West is saved in the name of Jesus too. This is where your your conviction becomes alive now tonight in this broadcast. I told you some people would not be able to last. You can only be saved in the truth. You can't, okay, you should not say you were saved in a lie. And then you came to know the truth. It doesn't work like that. Because you are only free when you know the truth. I was not saved in the name of Jesus. Even when I was preaching, I wasn't saved. Yes, it's on record now. I said it yet again to y'all. When I was preaching in a wrong name, I do not consider myself to be a saved person. I can't be saved in error. How many of your pastors could say that? I don't have a fear in telling you exactly what the truth is because the truth is the truth. But when persons are desperate, you have to remember now, the name Jesus came, is, I am not trying to make an argument to belittle anybody. It's a fact. Your confession is that Jesus came or Jesus' name is a translation. It is not. If you say that you don't know language, You failed in linguistics. Jesus is not a translation of anything. It doesn't have a meaning. It didn't didn't say the name Jesus came from something. No. Say by their confession, this name is a human product. Then by their confession... By their confession, they were saved by a human product. Don't be mad at me. This is just a fact. If the name is a translation, which it is not, it's a human product. Trans is human product. Change from something to something. And if it's a human product, then you're saved by a human product, which is not divine.
You can only be saved when you meet Yahweh's criteria. Confess with your mouth the Lord Yeshua. Believe in your mind that Yahweh has raised him from the dead. Then you shall be saved. Anything else is not salvation. What it is, is human conviction, not salvation. Don't confuse the two. All of us on this broadcast who believe in Yeshua now had human conviction in error. In other words, you were convinced by something erroneous. Your faith was in something erroneous. And that, uh, that's it. I was about to say that. And that is why your behavior was always a struggle. Because you had a human conviction, not divine transformation. When you are saved by the truth, your mind is different. Your confession is not that I am weak and I'm trying. Your confession is that I should be living a particular way. Now let's go to the text. Let's go to scripture now. If you want to say that Kanye West is saved, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3 then, if he's a preacher. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Most of you know the text. Here is a statement that you can trust. Shaul telling his son Timothy. Anyone aspiring to be a congregation leader. Now King James makes it sound so important. A bishop. And people aspire to be bishops in the church. Oh, I'm a pastor. I want to be a bishop one day. Let me help you. The word bishop is episcopy in Greek. It means a congregation leader. That's all it is. Bishop is a leader of a congregation. One who is responsible for a congregation. In this case, it will be the church at Ephesus. However, that person has a standard by which he must live. Let me help you here now. My father, for example, is a bishop. He's the leader of a congregation. They looked him as for an example. First two, a congregation leader must be above reproach. It's in the text. He must be above reproach. Is Kanye West above reproach? Before you answer, let me help you all. Kanye West is maybe the first and only person I know of, that I know of, maybe you know some audience, but I know of, who was in the Oval Office of the President of the United States of America and used obscene language. Remember the world was mad at Kanye West, the U.S. people, because black people were angry with him because he supported Donald Trump. And he was in Trump's office in the, in the White House, cussing. That's the preacher. That's the safe guy right here. So you say, no, 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 that was just the other day he was saved. That's what I'm getting to the text now. Faithful to his wife. Committed to his wife. Temperate, he must have self-control. Self-control is tempered in his behavior. He must be quick-tempered. Orderly. <laughs> Hospitable and, listen to the big one. I'm getting to the big one right here. Able to teach. Teach what? Doctrine from the scripture. Is Kanye West qualified to teach doctrine from the scripture? Can he teach you about immersion? Can he teach you about the law? Can he teach you about grace being made to rule unto life while the law ruled unto death? I don't, Shelley. Never will I listen to Kanye West music. So you have company. A congregation leader must be able to teach. Now, this is a part I want some of you to get clear, please. What many people get nowadays is a situation where preachers are able to 
motivate. They have something exciting to say, but they cannot teach. Being able to encourage a congregation is not teaching. Saying something that lifts your spirit is not teaching. Giving you a good Sunday service so you can feel encouraged is not teaching. If he's going, because remember he said he's going to make his church. If he's making, good night Deborah, it's 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3, we're in verse number 2. If the leader is going, if Kanye West is going to make his church, then he has to be able to teach that church, but teach it what? Let's go further into the text. He must not drink excessively or get into fights. Rather, he must be kind and gentle. Look at this. He must not be a lover of money. It was embarrassing, and, and that's one thing I was glad about. When Kanye had to tell the church, including Jamal Bryant, that life is, you don't chase after money. You telling Jamal that? <laughs> he must manage his own household well. His children must obey him with all proper respect. For if a man can't manage his own household, how will he be able to care for the messianic community? Verse number six, since you want to see Kanye West is a preacher and he's saved. Verse number six. He must not be a new believer. Let's go to the book, man. Let me help you out to save Kanye tonight if you want to save him. A preacher who leads the church must not be a new believer. So a few months ago, he was cussing in the White House. So you say, well, oh, no, he wasn't saved then. Well, if he's saved recently, he cannot be a leader of any church. He should not be preaching in the first place. A leader of the congregation is never a new believer. Why? Because he might become puffed up with pride and fall under the same judgment as the adversary. What is the issue? Whenever a new believer gets up to talk and everybody starts reacting to him, oh wow, they like me. Kanye West is not qualified from any standard based on anything in scripture here to lead anybody. Number one, he does not know the truth. He cannot teach the truth. So how could Yahweh, now I know y'all get to know, God can use anybody. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a new culture. When I get through talking here, you'll hear that God can use anybody. So there's a new culture where God uses anybody beyond his words, principles. If Yahweh gives you a principle by which you must live, then he uses that principle. Don't forget that the church of Yeshua the Messiah has been given his spirit, who is the spirit of truth. Error is not found in the spirit of truth. A novice says what he thinks. A mature saint says what is documented and how it is to, rightly be, to be rightly divided. You don't hear me coming to talk to you about in my opinion and what I believe and what I think and, 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 and how I think things should go into church. I am supposed to only speak to you based on what is documented 
and rightly divide what is documented. I just can't pick things apart now. But this is where I'm going to get some of you very angry tonight from the Jesus camp. You tried with Nicki Minaj because all you want, you tried with Beyonce, Beyonce. All you need is for someone to just say the word Jesus. And you are eager to label them as saved. Because what you lack is confidence in the truth. So you need a popular person to give you confidence in your error. You Jesus preachers don't have confidence in the truth because you don't have the truth. So you need certain people to draw certain congregate people to pull certain crowds to make you feel more relevant. That is why you would try to find celebrities to label as saved. Because if a celebrity is saved, then you have more relevance. But we as preachers of righteousness who know the Messiah don't find relevance in human beings. We proclaim the truth to celebrities and tell them that you are just mere flesh and Yahweh will likewise judge you for your disobedience. That's how we deal with these people. You don't have relevance with me because you have some name. Tasha Cobbs, Kirk Franklin stood in, and, and with, 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 with uh, Ty Tribet and applauded Tasha Cobbs for causing Nicki Minaj to simply say the word Jesus. Listen to what they celebrate, that Tasha Cobbs got Nicki to say Jesus. Not saved, she just said Jesus on stage in a song. And Kirk Franklin is, is praising Tasha Cobbs for collaborating with Nicki Minaj. The most lewd. But Cardi B took over now. If you read the Bible, if, don't get mad at me. Get mad at Yahweh. If you read the scripture, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, and all these people, they dress like what the Bible calls a whore. And worse than a whore of Israel. Read the book, man. Don't get mad at me yet. Read how the scripture describes prostitutes. And they dress like a whore. But Tasha Cobb said, Jesus told her to sing with Nicki Minaj. And what did Jesus tell Nicki to say? That angels are shooting the devil with bullets. Utter garbage. When you are a person of righteousness, celebrities don't exist in your vocabulary. You don't have celebrity preachers. Your conviction comes from knowing who you are in Yahweh. Jamal Bryant is a man I told you I sat face to face with in a room with other preachers, a few of us. He lacks integrity to say the least. He's a pimp. He knows how to spin to make money. He draws the crowd because he knows how to charge people, how to get them worked up to feel good about themselves. He knew that with Kanye West coming to new birth, Kanye West fans will flood the auditorium and when you flood the auditorium you have got news media that will be there for you you'll, go, you'll have all of the, the, the eyes on you you'll have a lot of attention and you'll gain popularity and there are prophets who said that Jamal Bryant is a man of God and Kanye West is now being used by God because he's singing for Jesus. 
He is being used, and I love the term they use, by God. Let me give you this clearly tonight, please. The God of this world rules the Jesus church. You could write that and get mad after writing it. But it's the truth and nothing but the truth. The God of this world rules the Jesus church. And I will prove it to you from scripture. The God of this world. Wow, Shazan, that is a testimony in itself. The God of this world rules every Jesus church. Oh, would you on it, son? You on it, son? They are empty. Yahweh has rejected them. The God of this world. Rules every Jesus church. You could get as mad as you want. I'll prove it to you. What is the God of this world? Who is he? Hasatan. Thank you. How do you know he rules in Jesus church? Because Hasatan rules by one basic principle. Deception. I'm giving you scripture. Deception is what the enemy is going to control the whole world and does so by. He controls the whole world by something called deception. Deception can only exist where there is a conviction that what is wrong is right. Okay, so let me tell you why I said the God of this world rules the, 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 the Jesus, Jesus church. If you tell me that you know that the, the Messiah's name given by his father is Yeshua, but the moment you say but, you have disconnected from what Yahweh has said. And you know, entering into the world. If you say, you preachers who always tell me, I know, you say, you know that the father called his son Yeshua. You said it. Therefore, you know the truth. But you have to be convicted by a lie. That is deception. So Kim Kardashian said, Kanye, Kanye West's wife, said that Kanye was singing these songs on Sunday. Because he needed to be healed. <laughs> Kanye had, was trying to find himself. Listen to terminology now. And in trying to find himself, he started at home just to play these beats and sing to them. And in trying to find himself, friends would come over and then the thing just began to grow. Is not Yahweh told Kanye anything. Shaul scripture says, a prisoner of Messiah. Kepha, a prisoner, a bond servant. Shaul, an emissary, an, no, this is Kanye trying to heal himself from whatever hurt he feels. And he does so with music. He was going through so much. He was broke. He was going through a whole lot with money. He wants his business to grow. So he plays music on Sunday just to relieve himself of the stress. People, family and friends will listen to him playing. And then, of course, because of connections, he called people up and they began to play and began to grow on him. When it became popular... And celebrities started tuning in to say, well, wow, Brad Pitt and those guys say, man, Kanye is doing something good. Jamal Bryant jumps on the bandwagon. And now you people who follow me, some of you, are supporting and endorsing Kanye West as a preacher? Anything goes. In Jesus' name. Because Jesus' name is associated with error, it quickly, or those who hold fast to the name Jesus, quickly endorse error as well. Because Jesus' name is associated with and founded upon error, those who hold fast to the name of Jesus will also defend error. 
Because remember, your conviction, your salvation is based on error. Sandra QH asks a question. Man, you telling me I was sitting under the wrong doctrine all these years? Absolutely yes. And Sandra, Google, Safari, Bing, Yahoo, any search engine, including Britannica, will show you that you were under error for all these years. So even without Holy Spirit, language itself says you're under error. Because if you check tonight, when was English language developed? Check it for yourself. You'll see it was developed over 700 years after the Messiah left the earth. So you can't have an English name. Now, what would you do about the error that you were under? That's a question. Will you stay in it because you became comfortable in error? Most people who argue with me argue what Sandra would have said. I, all my life, this is what I know. Well, all of your life you've been wrong. You know how many people lived and died thinking the world was on the back of a, a giant tortoise? Were they right? For hundreds of years, they said that the world sat on the back of a giant tortoise. Are they correct? They lived and they died believing that the earth was on the back of a giant turtle. Were they right though? So because Jesus is founded on error, the culture of the G Jesus church is erroneous. The culture is whatever I am convinced about is what is true. Not what the scripture says. What I feel is okay for me is true. That's a Jesus church in, in, in a nutshell. Whatever I accept is true. So if the pastor gets you mad, you go to somewhere else because you don't accept what the pastor said. If you, if you like the song, then wow, yeah, great. God moved today. Why? Because you like the music. If you don't like the music, the singer wasn't in the spirit. Jesus' church is about the flesh. You all tell me I'm wrong. I dare you to tell me I'm wrong. If the singer sounds good and you felt good, wow, the spirit moved today. If they didn't sound good, she wasn't in the spirit. Based on whose assessment? Yours, because it doesn't please your flesh. In the Jesus church, anointing is what you feel. Boy, this one here can kill some of y'all. In the Jesus church, anointing is what you feel. It's sensational. In Yeshua, anointing is who he is. I hope y'all get the difference here tonight. In the Jesus church, anointing is a feeling. In Yeshua, anointing is a person. Let's talk, man. Since you all like get mad at me, some of you, let's just deal with this because all you could do is get mad. You can't change anything I've said to deny it. So the Tasha Cobbs is anointed in the Jesus church because she makes them feel good. But in Yeshua the Messiah, I am not anointed because of how you feel. I have to possess the image of the Messiah to be called anointed in the context that he has selected me to bear the image of the Messiah. You, the saints, carry the image of the Messiah. So it's not a feeling. It's a manifestation of a behavior. Shaul said we put on Christ. We put on Messiah. Messiah is the anointed one. We wear the anointed one. We don't feel. Now how can you put on Messiah but preach error? And believe error? And defend error? Your anointing is sensational. That's Jesus, because Jesus came from the sense of man. Oh, I don't speak Hebrew, so I'll say Jesus. And it is an absolutely foolish thing to say. Because you say, I don't speak Hebrew, so I do not say Yeshua. So what did you just say? You just said Yeshua.
Many people bring singers and musicians and say, okay, the person can play well. Kanye West can, is a producer, so he makes beats. Kanye West is anointed by what standard? Because he makes beats. No, he's skillful. He's not anointed. My Lord, all the songs Kanye used bring up the feelings of the flesh. He, at, at, at Jamal Bryant Church, you know what he used? A song from Genuine, I think it is. He made a remix of a, of a, a secular song, a sex symbol song. And the people loved how it felt. Just what Pastor Woodley is saying. In the church, if you have a skill, you skill full. You're not anointed. In the truth, in the truth, you only anointed when you bear the image of the anointed one. When you wear him, when you stand for truth and righteousness. I'm going down the corner with you all tonight. That's it, Pastor Reg, the soul anchored songs. You feel good. When you wear Messiah, when you put on Messiah, put on Christ, when you put him on, you stand for righteousness. You stand for justice. You don't like injustice. You have these people forcing the LGBT. Oh, let me get that with you as well. Kanye West Church has a rule that everybody is accepted. Get that. Get that. Everyone is accepted. LGBTQRSTUVWXYZABC, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Data, Delta, all them. All them. Oh, the next thing. In Kanye West Church, they have a, a, a rule. An unwritten rule. You're not allowed to pray and they're not supposed to preach. When the church is built on preaching. <laughs> the church of Messiah is built on preaching. In Kanye West Church, you don't pray. When scripture says men should always pray, meaning you must have a consistent nature of prayer. Kanye West is not praying in the church. But he's saved. He's disobeying a command in scripture. Men ought always to pray. And his church, Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, said, we don't pray, we just sing. We don't have to preach, we just sing. You soulish devils who say that you like Jesus, I'm dealing with you all tonight because you want to point fingers at us and say, y'all are judgmental. Because Kanye is saved, you're not saved. When you wear Messiah, you talk like me. You don't, you're not scared of people. I don't care if you unfriend me, you unfollow me, you block me, you delete me, whatever you choose to do, you still would have had to hear me before you do it. You are wicked. The church is edified by speaking. Ephesians 4, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, not singer, not beat producer. The body of Messiah can only be edified by what is spoken. Or if you sing, you sing what was spoken. Regina, my daughter, for example, sings what, it, what is spoken. Rodney, or uh, him, my son. They listen to me preach. They listen to the leader speak. And when they hear the truth, they sing it. They don't sing feelings. They sing word. So if Kanye West is a preacher, you say, how could he have, be a preacher and doesn't preach? Only sometimes he may feel like saying something. When you wear Messiah, you're anointed. You act like Messiah. You hate what he hates. For as long as Kanye West 
says that Jesus is the Savior, he is lost. Are you mad? I don't care. Because you preachers are lost too. Every preacher who says that the Messiah's name is Jesus is lost. Yes, I've said it. You need to be saved. Are you mad? You're still lost. Your sensational reaction to what I say has nothing to do with what the truth is. You can only be saved by calling on the truth. Wow! A church with no doctrine is an art palace. That's it, Chinelli. An art palace. Just skills arrive. Bring the skills here. Let, let, let's use your skill. That's all there is to it. When you put on Messiah, you have resentment for injustice. You despise it. You hate it. You cannot stand that which is unjust. You defend the cause of the poor and the needy. I've been saying this for weeks. In the Bahamas with Dorian, I've been speaking for this for weeks and I wouldn't stop until it's different. This is the, what, maybe 17 days, 16 days have passed and you still see the death toll is 50 something? While hundreds of people are, are bodies are on the ground being collected? Do we not care? When you wear Messiah, nations don't, fit, don't, don't scare you. Their, their entire their cultures of people who are against what I preach, I don't care. There are entire denominations in Guyana who have a rule like the Assemblies of God. No preacher in Assemblies of God must have Nigel on them preach in their church. I don't care. You're still wicked. When you wear Messiah, you don't be afraid of foolishness. Oh, be careful. If you, if you say, talk about Kanye like this, people are going to get at you. Get at me for what? And then what happens after they get at me? What happens after they get at me? When you are anointed, you wear Messiah. You demonstrate Messiah. Who was he afraid of? Saints, do not ever be caught up in the act of defending destructive error because you felt good in it. Oh my Lord, Pastor Wood. You should never be caught defending celebrities that you like. Prince, they say, was saved. And a woman had the nerve to say Prince is saved because she liked his music. There's a preacher I'm talking about here. There's a preacher who said that Prince, the artist, the full-blown sodomite, bisexual joker, was saved because she liked to party to his music. That's the kind of devils we have in Jesus' name in the church. That's it, Pastor Wood. What is, who is in you? All these celebrities. So because Prince music was good and she enjoyed Prince in the, in, in, in the club, she said Prince was saved. When Luther Vandross died, they said Luther is saved. Michael Jackson died, Michael is saved. Michael is full-blown Jehovah's Witness. But he's saved. Everybody is now saved. Because they sound good, they please me, I like how they sound. Why? And I get it, I got it. Because Jesus' name is sensual, based on the senses of man, then whoever appeals to their senses, they will always honor. That's the bottom line. Salvation in the Jesus church is based on what is sensual, not what is true.
in Yeshua the Messiah, salvation is entirely based on what is true. It cannot be altered. We don't adjust Yahweh's word to make you saved. You are saved according to Yahweh's word. It's not according to what you have adulterated or changed. In Yeshua, you are saved by the truth. In Jesus, you save by your senses. So you feel saved. You told that you saved in the Jesus church. Listen, you saved now. Now that you repeat after me, you're saved. Give me a name. Give me a number. I will call you saved. You go back to the club the next night. You party, get drunk and wine and, and come on now. You, you saved. Because pastor said I'm saved. In the body of Messiah. Let me tell you how you can guarantee that you're saved. You will have to develop a dislike for sin. Wrong doctrine, Sandra. It doesn't matter what. You could name a hundred churches. I, and I know you, you know me. You're still wrong. And so was I. Doesn't matter where you sit, you're still wrong. John Smith from Central Assemblies of God said he knows the Messiah's name is Yeshua. He plays songs with the name Yeshua. And still won't call him something else. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you don't know the truth, you are lost. That's the bottom line. Kanye West does not know the truth. He is lost. But he fits the nature of the preachers, which is whatever I feel is okay. I could do whatever I want. As long as I show up in the church and make the people feel good, then I'm a righteous man. Jamal Bryant is a disgrace. If you don't know what the African Methodist Episcopal is all about, it is about African. Did you hear the name? Methodist Episcopal. It's a pan-African kind of nature the church has. They push black liberty, black strength, blackness. The church of Yeshua is neither Jew, Gentile, Hebrew, none of them. All are one in Messiah. Jamal Bryant is a preacher who promotes black culture. Let me get, get even more angry. It doesn't bother me. Thank you for inviting Psycho. He needs to be here. He's one who needs to be here. Well, for tagging him. You feel good singers in Jesus' name. When you wear Messiah, I'm glad you brought him on the broadcast. Or you tagged him. When you wear Messiah, you can be saved, sanctified, filled with Holy Spirit, and sit beside a full-blown sissy. And comfortable. Righteous people stand for righteousness across the board. What do you all believe? Who do you wear? That's it. Another celebrity pops up, they'll be in another church because this will now be a trend here. In Los Angeles, West Angeles Church of God in Christ, Kojic, the man's, the, the singer, was married. A man was married. The guy that sang, Lord, make me over. Lord, make me over. What's his name? Tony. Tony was married to a woman. Tony said, after years of marriage, that he cannot remain married to his wife because he is not born to be married to a woman. He is now homosexual. He was made for a man. Tony, a gospel celebrity. 
after he said that, Tony went to West Angeles Church of God in Christ, where Charles Blake is the world's leader for Kojic. And Tony was put on the stage to sing as a full-blown sodomite. When you wear Messiah, that bothers you. I have said it once, and since Saiku, any bring custody in all them, because they need to hear this broadcast. All of you. I have said it once, and I'll say it until I die. For Core Ministries International, and any ministry that I lead, a sodomite is not permitted to do anything but sit and hear the truth. Nothing else. You mean no sodomite to come sing in any church that I lead? Get off the stage. You're not playing an instrument. You're not touching a key on the keyboard. You're not touching the drum. You're not touching the mic. You would not be a sodomite song leader in the church. You're not going to be any sodomite leading praise and worship in the church that I lead. Off. Y'all, Jesus people have no standard. What do y'all stand for? What bothers you? You jumping celebrities get saved? Saved by whose standard? What you call saved? Coming to church? Justin Bieber shows up in church and begins to sing, Oh, Justin Bieber is saved. What makes them saved? There's a trend, and some of y'all are too blind to see it. The trend is... That okay, celebrities are now coming into the Jesus church to make it acceptable for them to do whatever they want and still have a voice in another environment. It's called marketing, where you're able to invade a market. It's like war. Countries would invade other countries and take over. These celebrities are going into buildings and taking their status as access points or opportunities. So because I am Justin Bieber, I could be in the stage singing. Just get me in a church building. It doesn't matter what it is. Forget about my lifestyle. Once I'm in this church, good. Mario Lopez. Mario Lopez that you know about from Extra. Mario Lopez said that parents should stop forcing this transgender foolishness on their children. Boy, they came at him. They went down his throat. Who's Marion Hall? Um, the dance hall singer from Jamaica? Shazan, I can't remember her name. Give me her stage name. Right, so they went at Mario Lopez. You know what Mario Lopez did? Backpedal and said, okay, I, I realized that I, I, I was wrong. You are wrong for saying that parents should not be forcing transgenderism on their children. Guess what? Weeks later, Mario Lopez was baptized in Jesus' name. Woo! He saved. Everybody loves Mario again. The name of Jesus is a ticket to do whatever you want, but just under the guise of good behavior. Lady Saw, right. Lady Saw said she's saved. In whose name? Jesus' name. She's not. Lady Saw got saved today and tomorrow she's a preacher. Again, First Timothy chapter 3. No preacher in the church is a novice. Kiefer said, as babes, put away malice, put away strife, put away envy, put away all these wrong things. Listen to the statement in 1 Kiefer chapter 3, 1 Kiefer chapter 2. He said, and as babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. Lady Saw never had the milk. She started preaching on milk. You preach when you have meat. But she has to keep generating an income. How do you do it? You switch from, from, from the dance hall, go straight to Jesus and sing and preach. Money comes. She's now evangelist. Evangelizing error. If you change your behavior, but follow a wrong name, you're still lost. You not say because you just change your behavior. Salvation is not a change of behavior. It's a change of spirit. 
Your spirit is born. You born again. Born of the spirit. Not just change behavior. Anybody could change behavior. It's called human will. Anything goes in Jesus' name. It is a disgrace because I showed you, and I'm going to show you all again. I showed you what Kanye West, brother Kanye, supports, what his singers have to wear. Don't be mad at me. Deal with him. I showed you this is what Kanye, this is a Sunday service Kanye had. You who just came, Saikun, all y'all, if you want to watch, this is what happens in Jesus' name. This. This right here. And that's an actress. An actress and singer. She's not saved. Take a good look. This is what happens in Jesus' name. Because this is what happens. Look. That happens in the name of Judge Not. So since we live by Judge Not, everything is right. That's Tiana Taylor exactly, according to what somebody told me. That's what happens in Jesus' name. Because she is one of the singers for the Sunday service. But Brother Kanye, according to them, is now a preacher. Not even just saved, he's now a preacher. The only people who can defend Kanye West are Jesus preachers and their followers. I repeat, the only people who can defend Kanye West are Jesus preachers and their followers. No one. No one who preaches in Yeshua's name will ever say that Kanye West is saved because he can't be saved in a wrong name. It is sickening. It is disgusting to see you people being played, but you can't, def you can't do anything about it because you're deluded and somebody has to tell you. By their fruit, you'll know them. That's the, that's the scripture. If the fruit is erroneous, then the whole tree has to be an erroneous tree. What is most concerning, if you all don't understand me tonight, is that anything, and I want you all to hear me as I speak this as clearly as possible before I go. Anything goes in Jesus' name. Prove me wrong and I'll never preach again. Because only the other day, only this week, this week, this week, another church appointed the first transgender pastor in Jesus' name. Y'all tell me that I'm wrong. Tell me that I'm wrong. Even the Seventh-day Adventist Northern Conference has a full-blown lesbian as a pastor. Keeping the Sabbath. But she's lesbian. And she's an elder. Sandra, you're better off staying home. And stay home and do research. When you finish research, you'll know the truth. And the truth will make you free. I told people that from day one. Hear the statement, church. Anything goes in Jesus' name.
you can make the most erroneous statements in Jesus' name. And if it feels good, it's accepted. And defended. Doesn't matter. But Yahweh is causing his apostles to tear down strongholds. This Jesus name is a stronghold. It is coming down before your very eyes. And people are dying because they cannot deal with what they're seeing. Preachers are having nervous breakdown. They can't take it because there is now a preacher. A young, they call me this little black boy. I don't care what you call me. Who's now showing up on the scene. Where did he come from all the time? That's exactly what they asked about Messiah. Who is he? Is he not Errol London's son? Isn't this guy the, the same? Yeah, right. No, I'm not the same person. But here I am, in your face, calling your countries out, calling your churches out, telling you that you're wicked and you can't stand it because what I'm saying is the absolute truth. If any one of you preachers in Jesus' name could have found one thing to shut me down from in Scripture, you would have done so long ago, but you can't. And that's what torturing you. And I praise Yahweh that will continue to torture you. If you could find one scripture to shut Niger London down, I would, have been, I would have been gone. But you cannot. Yahweh has graced me and others to begin to tear the stronghold of Jesus down. So much so that on an international scale, he embarrassed the preachers in the Bahamas. Who said the must in Jesus' name the storm wouldn't come and what happened? Dorian is the is a historic event in the Bahamas. Because a preacher said and others said it will not happen to the Bahamas in Jesus' name. And the name of Jesus failed. I watched a television broadcast where Maurice Sorello and generals from around the world were praying for John Smith's sister. And saying, Jesus' name, she will not die. She died within two days after that. From Central Assembly. Bless you, Pastor Woods. Where did it come from? The King of Glory assigned preachers of an age now to say, You older ones, you are fired because you never defended me in the first place. I will now expose your error to the world. Yahweh preserved us for the social media age where we don't need an invitation to deal with y'all. We embarrass you on an international stage because reproach means to embarrass somebody. Reproof means to embarrass you so you can change. Read your Bible before you talk foolishness. The scripture told Timothy and us, you must rebuke, you must reprove. Reprove means to embarrass someone so they can be ashamed and change. What are they saying? He should meet with us privately. Don't, you shouldn't go on public and talk about us like that. Why can't you come to meetings with us? Meet you for what? If you are different, you show you're different. I have to meet you privately for you to be different. You're wicked. Y'all can never get me to any secret room to talk to you because you're dangerous people. I don't fear what you could do to me, but I know what you do to the congregation. You meet with me, and then you go out to say, well, we had a meeting with Nigel London, and it is, well, he, he accepts that we, we can call Jesus the Messiah too. I know you all, you're dangerous people. I don't want to meet any of you privately, unless you're repenting, or you're recording. I don't owe you, Jesus preachers, any degree of, of respect. None. You are deceiving Yahweh's people. You're deceiving people and in masses. Why must I owe you honor when you're doing what is dishonorable? I don't owe you all anything. All I owe you is the truth, and that's what I give you. Ephesians 5:11 says, I "Have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them or expose them." That's what I'm doing. Unfruitful. It doesn't bear you any fruit. Tonight, I bid you all shalom. I am so grateful that you've joined me. And I hope that I've given enough redress to this Kanye West garbage that you will not be caught up 
in the wave of nonsense. Anything goes in Jesus' name, but only the truth stands in Yeshua's name. Nothing else, for Yeshua is the way. Yeshua is the truth, and Yeshua is the life. If you don't believe in the Lord Yeshua, to the point where you proclaim him or you type his name publicly and say he is my Messiah, you are lost. If you are ashamed of him before men, he shall be ashamed of you before the Father. If you deny him before men, he shall deny you before the Father, which means you're lost. I bid you all shalom, saints. Blessings. Thank you. Sandra, if you're on the broadcast, I hope that you would indeed look deeper into this. You can feel free to contact me or anybody else. All right? Bless you. So please, and I just call the name they know you're going to type. If you want to contact me for further information, feel free. I have no problem. No issue whatsoever, but you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The persons in England, the persons in, in different parts of the world who sit and watch our broadcast, and that's all they do for church. Because they said they'd rather not hear a lie. They rather stay home and hear the truth than go in a place whereby the preacher preaches a lie knowing the truth. I bid you all shalom and I thank you so much. Bye-bye. Shalom, saints. Remember, please feel free to share the broadcast with others. They may need to hear this. Some do not get a chance to see the broadcast. So please, if you can, share this broadcast with others. Thank you so much. Because there are those who say they don't get a notification. This is not about likes or whatever else it is. There are those saints among us who don't get to see when I'm live. Please, share so they can see. Amen? Thank you. Bye-bye.